Uh, yes, Jeff, I am going to be recording this and we will send this out to you shortly after the webinar is over, you guys. Uh, and I highly suggest everybody rewatch this webinar one more time and, uh, and take a look at it again because the first time through, you don't always catch everything. Second time through, what you already learned will really solidify and stick with you a lot longer. Uh, rather than waiting it out for several days and and then going back and watching it. it. It just won't sink in nearly as much. So try and watch it relatively quickly. I know everybody probably wants to get out of here after a crazy day like today. But this is a great technique for trading call options. And uh, we'll go into detail what it is in a minute, but let me get a couple of things out of the way. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me from CNBC, Fox Business, or the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I've been trading my own money for well over 20 years, and I'm not here to tell you that I'm going to make you rich or that I'm going to make you a millionaire, but I am here to teach you how to take control of your finances, manage your own portfolio, and most importantly, manage your own risk. Uh, it says, uh, the, is this breaking up with everybody else besides Jeff? Could be because I have a fan on in the background. Jeff, nobody else is having a problem right now. Let me turn off this fan just in case. All right, everybody else, good, good. All right. Um, like I said, I've traded in most markets throughout my career. I've traded everything from the Board of Trade, I've traded stocks, I've traded financial futures, I've traded commodity futures, currencies, and options on all of those products and in all market conditions. If you guys were on a little earlier, I said a rip your face off rally. This is what a rip your face off rally looks like. It's because you're wiping your face all day long. <laughs> uh, so, and I have a disclaimer I've got to go over, which everybody generally has to, but this is any opinions, news, research, and analysis, prices, or other information contained here is provided or other than market commentary. That's all this is and to teach you. It does not constitute investment advice. And at the end of the day, past performance is not indicative of future results. So guys, take what we teach you in these webinars, play around with it, implement it in your portfolios in your own way. The reason why I can't give you advice on a particular strategy or, or uh, equity or underlying for that matter is because I don't know what your, what your risk parameters are. I don't know what's in your portfolio. Therefore, what we're talking about in these webinars could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. All right. Having that out of the way, this is going to be financing a long call. Now, if you guys watch many of my webinars or the daily market commentaries that I do, you know that I don't like to buy options. Uh, the reason why is because they're a decaying asset. And especially right now in the environment that we've had lately where implied volatility is really high. Uh, it has come off a little bit, but if you really look through the historicals, it is still quite high. And if what I was saying earlier with the market having this bad economic data today and the market continues to rally, you're going to see a lot of volatility come out of those options. So be very selective when implementing this particular strategy uh, because it is buying a long dated call. And if volatility comes out of that call, you're going to see the premium shrink. You could be directionally right, but still see that premium shrink. So we're going to be, really digging down deep and trying to find some options that already have low volatility in the expectation that that volatility will either remain uh, flat lined in that same range or go higher uh, down the road. And this is going to be a long call calendar and uh, it can also be known as a bull calendar spread. It is really going to be uh, a strategy where you're market neutral in the beginning, like maybe something's had a bit of a rally and you're going to see a little sell off in the next couple 
uh, of weeks or something like that, and then continue on to a rally. So that's what we're really going to look to try and take advantage of. Uh, Jeff is asking, where do I get daily market commentaries? Uh, if you're a subscriber, you will be getting those sent to you. Uh, somebody will pop in a link there for you to uh, get that the daily market commentaries and uh, for the future. And this could also be considered a time spread because you are buying time. You're buying the further out duration. Uh, the couple of questions you have to ask yourself before implementing this strategy is how bullish am I on the on the underlying? And that's going to determine where we're going to pick our strikes. If we're really bullish on this, we're going to pick a little bit further out of the money strike. If we're uh, you know, neutral to kind of bullish in the interim and then think like we're going to get an expansion or a rally coming down the pipe, then we would probably want to pick something a little closer to at the money. And the other question you need to ask yourself is, is the market volatile? This is volatility, not volume. Sorry, I probably should have printed that all the way out. I always just say volatility as vol and was typing it out that way. But Market volatility, where is it? We have to ask ourselves that with any option strategy because that is the main factor that's going to determine whether we buy or sell an option. If it's above 50, we're going to be looking to sell options. If it's below 50, that's when we're going to be looking for our buying. And I really try and get below 30 before I really start looking to buy an option because if you buy an option with volatility above 50, and this is the volatility percentile, and I'll show you where to find that on the uh, options grid, but uh, we want that relatively low, especially for a calendar spread. The reason why is because we want to see uh, a lot of theta. This is a play on theta and vega. But the other main question is, is the market liquid? And liquid means that there's a lot of players in there because on days like today, if you are in a option that doesn't have a lot of liquidity, you see that bid ask spread really widen out. I mean, if you're talking a quarter when you got in and there was not a lot of uh, action going on in that underlying, uh, as soon as it gets crazy in there, that option spread could go 50, 75 cents and you just can't get out. Uh, so make sure it's liquid. You want it really tight bid ask spread on there. So uh, make sure you have that uh, checked off your list for sure. And we're going to be, uh, oh, I wrote that up backwards. We're going to be selling, selling a near term option. Sorry about that. This is selling the near term option. Let me put up a, uh, Pin. This is not right. Sell. We're going to be selling the near term option to finance buying our longer term option. Buying. Sorry about that. Buy and sell. I wrote that up backwards. Sorry about that. We're going to sell the near term option and we are going to be buying the long term option. We're selling the near term option to help finance this long-term option because those are going to, uh, and you're always going to do this for a debit. Uh, there's a diagonal way to do a twist on a calendar. We're not going to really be talking about that. If you do the diagonal, you're looking to uh, collect some money for that. So we're buying the long-term option. We're selling the near-term options to finance that long call, which gives us the ability to have more, upside potential with this. Uh, yes, you would do this. Uh, I'm asking, We usually you can do this in one go uh, with one, uh, yes, click of the, the button. And I can even show you how to do that if you don't uh, pick the calendar. Uh, you can, there's a couple of different ways to get that so you put it in a, as one trade. And the, re the reason why you want to do this as one trade, you guys, is because uh, the counterparty doesn't want to take the risk. If you're doing it as, you know, uh, selling a naked call, uh, then 
the counterparty has a lot more risk. If you're doing this as a defined risk strategy, then the uh, counterparty doesn't have as much risk and will be willing to work with you on price. Think of it that way. If you're doing a naked call, he has to go out and hedge that position or, uh, or, or do something against it. And if you do it as a defined risk strategy, the counterparty will likely be willing to work with you. You'll get a tighter bid ask spread. So I would highly suggest doing that. And how do we pick our strike selection? Like I said earlier, mentioned, if you're really bullish on this underlying, then you would want to pick further out of the money because you don't want that short call to go in the money during the time frame that you have. Uh, you don't care if the long term call goes in the money, the one that you bought, because then you have unlimited upside potential if you let that front month expire, which I have been known to do. Uh, I, I have no problem once I finance that call, letting the front one expire and then have uh, have the call on for relatively cheap. The other thing that you can do if you pick a really liquid underlying is roll that out, the short call out to through the weeklies uh, until you get to that long uh, dated option, which is usually one of the full cycles later. So uh, that is the beauty of this. You can lower your basis to where you essentially own that call for free. And that is going to be something we're going to be looking to try and uh, exploit today. And keep in mind what your profit target is on this. Uh, generally speaking, if I'm not looking to uh, run this all the way out, uh, I might look at a risking one to make two. So if I collected 70 cents, I'm going to look to collect a dollar 40 on it. Uh, so if I can double what I laid out for this strategy, that's when I'm going to look to cover. And again, if you guys watch the other webinars, um, I go through all my uh, risk profiles and and always have a profit target which is usually a percent of what I am trying to trade and and stick with it because you know you never know where the market's going to turn around even though um, you may be right one day and be in the money pretty well then the next day you could easily see that get turned around just like what happened in uh, win and uh, and in the casino stocks today, I mean, that was just a massive rally and wind up 22 percent or something just off the Chinese government saying they were going to do anything they can to try and get uh, gambling going. in uh, I think it's Macau or something, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, but uh, that's what caused those to rally there. And our maximum profit is unlimited. Uh, keep in mind, it's unlimited if you let that near-term option expire uh, because you're having a long call. Anytime you buy a uh, call, you have unlimited profit to the upside. Anytime you buy a put, uh, you have pretty much unlimited to the downside of it going to zero. And we all know it doesn't go below zero, but um, you have that potential as well. But with this particular one, because we're doing a long call in the further duration, we will have unlimited upside potential. Again, I'm going to be looking at my profit target, though, rather than hitting a home run with a long run. And our max loss is limited, and it's limited to the initial debt we paid. So if we collect, say, 40 cents in the, in the front month and then... Uh, we buy our long dated call strike for $1.40, our loss is limited to that dollar. It can't really go any further than that. And like I hinted on, this is going to be a play on Vega. The reason why it's a play on Vega, which is volatility, is because we're going to be picking something with very low volatility or, or uh, you know, low volatility for itself and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we pop up the options chain but we want low Vega because we want the opportunity to have that Vega expand if we buy something say for instance um, I'm off the top of my head something like uh, Google or whatever that has like 70 percent uh, implied volatility percentile 
really the only way that it's going to go is down. Uh, you know, U.S. Steel is another one that has really high implied volatility right now. And if you have that volatility contract on you, then it is going to help you in the front month that you're short, but it's going to really affect the further duration options a lot more than it is on uh, the closer duration. Theta affects the front month a little bit more. Uh, sorry, uh, can't wrap my around the maximum loss is a debt. Yes, so if you paid a dollar, anytime you're buying an option, that is your max loss. The reason why that is your max loss, the dollar that you paid for the option is because, you know, if it goes against you, you don't have to exercise the right to take that stock. So in options, when you are a buyer, you have uh, the opportunity to call that stock away from somebody, or if you do buy a put, put that stock to somebody, meaning you tell them to take your stock away. So you're selling it at that price. Um, this uh, selling, well, so uh, uh, the selling is the side. Okay, so the reason why you, it's a defined risk strategy because you're short the front month. So if you're short the 55 call and in the back month, you're long the 55 call, if it goes through your 55 calls, you know, you're offset in the long side because you could, if, if somebody, you know, uh, has you take that call, then you can exercise the right for the call in longer, longer duration. Does that make sense? So if I'm short in the front month, I have undefined risk in a sense where if the market rallies through my short call, uh, that's a loser, but I'm making that up in the back month because if I'm short the 55 call in October and I'm long the 55 call in November, if it goes up to 60, let's say, then my 55 calls are, are in the money in the further duration. So they're offset. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're on a calendar spread, you're doing the same strike. Sorry, I, I kind of brushed over that probably. In a calendar spread, we are going to be selling a October, let's just say, uh, 55 call in XYZ, and we are going to be buying the November 55 call in XYZ. So we're hitting the same strike on a calendar spread. Um, and that, that was probably confusing because I had to uh, write, um, write over my other stuff. I got, got ahead of myself because I saw my mistake there and forgot to say that we were buying the same strike. And we're going to be trying to exploit theta. And by, by exploiting theta, we're going to try and capture some, some uh, time decay in the front month. And how do we exploit theta? Right here is a great chart of theta decay. As you can see, if we're going to be buying something in the further duration where you're not seeing the theta decay happen. But then once you get inside this, you know, 45 to 35 day area, you start seeing the theta really drop. So just in this area alone, you see a 50% drop in your theta or which will seriously affect your premiums. Now, the further out, like I said, if we're buying uh, a further out month, that theta decay doesn't happen as fast. So we're going to try and take advantage by being short in the closer duration and get that theta decay and eventually we want to see this theta decay happen after like 10, 15 days. And then we want to uh, either get out of the front month. If we see volatility start to expand, we're going to want to get out of this front month and watch volatility expand in our further duration. It is possible to get exercise on your short strike and you would have to, uh, exercise your right in the further duration that's why it's it's offsetting or you could try and close it out if you thought you were going to get exercised but at the end of the day it's 
a defined risk strategy, so you don't really have to worry about that so much. So keep in mind, we're going to try and play on Vega, expanding volatility, because as volatility expands, it's going to affect the further duration months. So it's a play on Vega, because if Vega expands, and I'll show you how you can check that out on the uh, screen here in a second, on the options grid, and we want to exploit the theta decay in the front month. All right, so let's go into the options grid here. And uh, so, for instance, let's look at uh, um, any one of these. I was going to look at a couple of different ones, like BBY, because they've had, you know, another thing with doing these options is you really don't want to have uh, a dividend or, you know, a binary event going on during this. Uh, because that can really affect your strategy. So BBY just had a uh, um, the, an earnings call, and they came out with good earnings. So this is a stock that I would think would have a tendency to want to rally after good earnings, especially after the data that we had today. I think the market is going to start pushing higher, despite the fact that it wasn't good economic data. Uh, so this would be a good one to look at. Um, also, BBY, I think, has pretty low uh, implied volatility. So it's below 50, so it would fit my rip, my parameter on asking myself what is the implied volatility percentile, and it's 45. I just think that 45, um, looking at something like this, you know, these August lows and stuff really got volatility pumped up. But it, you know, it, it gets pumped up pretty good around earnings that is probably around the same as those August, that August move, it didn't really affect it so much. So that's probably a pretty clean uh, implied volatility rank. Keep in mind when you're looking at this, you do have that from the August 24th lows when we really spiked down, that's gonna cause a big spike in implied volatility rank, or implied volatility. So on some of these, what you're gonna need, what I've been doing lately, if it's seen a serious spike on an underlying and generally speaking around the uh, earnings cycles, it, it's pretty constant, is in the numerator, what you want to do is you take the where the implied volatility is now and subtract it from the low in implied volatility, and that goes in the numerator, and in the denominator, you take where the highs are or the high is and if you wanted to like take out an outlier like this august 24 kind of on some of them you take the high minus the low in the denominator and then you divide those by each other and that's how this number is uh mathematically figured out okay does that make sense to everybody you take the where the Implied volatility is now minus the low and divide that by the high minus the low. And that is your IV percentile. That's just the math for that. So now this is the reason why. So if we got implied volatility, this is the neat little thing with the options grid right here. If you go to theoretical price and market. What that does is then you click on right next to it. So theoretical price, you can increase what the price of BBY is going to be, say it goes to 60. And what it'll do is it will reset all of your options prices over here. Um, I don't know why that's doing that. I haven't done it with the prices, but uh, so the stock adjusted prices for your options. The other thing you can do is look at the adjusted volatility. So that is going to be, so this shows where the market's trading. And this shows if implied volatility, if this goes up to 55, what that theoretical price is going to be for that option. So you can see just a 10% increase in implied volatility is going to make this expand by a dollar. 
But if you look at how it affects the further durations, the same strike, let's pick the 60 strike, it goes from say uh, 90 cents, which is the mark, let's say 90 cents to $1.60. So it's gaining uh, almost uh, 80 cents there. But if you look at the 60 strike here, it gains about a dollar uh, 20, let's say, just for math purposes. So you're gaining an extra 40 cents there. So that's why you know we don't mind volatility expanding. Unfortunately, I can't show you the volatility contraction because for some reason I was on with TD today and mine's not giving me negative volatility adjustment. So I, I've got to figure something out with that. I, um, but you can uh, do that on your own uh, platforms if you have TOS. You can put in the negative sign 10 and it will show you what the uh, theoretical price is going to be if implied volatility drops, which is very key. Um, yeah, Michael wants me to repeat the formula for the implied volatility percentile. It is easier to look at here. IV percentile is where it's trading now. So that's this number, the 2679. And on the, and this is on the numerator, which is on the top of the division. So you put, draw your line and on the numerator, you take 26.79 minus um, ballpark it right here, 16.56, uh, subtract those from each other. So let's just say 10 goes on top. And then on the bottom, we take the high, which is for ballparking purposes, 40 minus the 16, which is... Uh, what is that, 24, let's just say 24 for math purposes. So you would divide 10 by 24. And that's what you, that comes up with about, you know, ballpark of 45%. And, the, and I suggest you guys play around with that, especially when uh, you guys are looking at options and thinking you want to, do something or you think that there's going to be an implied volatility percentile increase, you can increase it, see what your premiums will be or decrease it, see what the premiums are going to be and play around with your price adjust like where the theoretical price of that is going to be and what your options will be worth. And you can check the uh, error gives me 42%. Is that what my ballpark came out to be? Uh, do you do that in your head, Eric? So that's how you come up with those uh, different uh, percents there. So BBBOI uh, is good, but one thing with this was is it goes from November. It doesn't have Jan or December options, and I also think that it has a dividend coming up in in January. So, or uh, where is it? Let me see if I can pull this up and. Uh, always look at the markup profile so probably should I think yeah since it just had that so it would be nice because I think the comes in January so see that's why I would love it if I had a December option here because we could do the December and not have to deal with the next earnings cycle or the dividend that's going to fall right in here somewhere I'm not exactly sure where their dividend is going to be not sure why maybe they don't give a dividend on BBY so um, that could actually fit in. Um, all right, so another one I was looking at was Costco. Costco's had good earnings. They just came out with pretty good earnings. The market's pushing up at, you know, at calendar spreads, you do kind of want this to be a neutral to bullish assumption. I could see after a big rally like today, you know, this is pushing on that close to the highs that we've seen in quite some time. So, you know, putting this strategy on right around here, because I have a feeling it'll probably come up, test this area, want to sell off. This is the value area here, which is where the overall market has traded the most time and volume. This is a value area high, which uh, usually on the first time up, it'll come up, test that, come back down to where it finds comfort and then push higher. So, you know, I would want to see 
something around this 148 area for my option. So let's look at the strike for the 148. And I probably want to go into the November, December, so sell in the uh, Costco. So 148, see if it's going to go way far out though, I bet we're going to start going in five tick in increments. So I'm going to probably have to pick the 50s, which puts me right there. Um, I want to see my gamma. And okay, so this is what I was talking about, depending on how bullish or bearish you are, or how bullish, if I'm really bullish in uh, Costco, I'm usually going to look to the uh, 33 delta. And the reason why I look for like a 30 some odd delta is because that means that I have a 33% probability of being in uh, the money at expiration and a 67% probability of it being out of the money. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. You know, the closer you are to at the money, the less bullish you are in the near term and the further away out of the money you are the you know you're a little bit more bullish in this assumption um, so you know with this uh, I don't really like it because I wouldn't be able to roll it out so that's why I kind of push away from Costco they don't have the December contracts either uh, asking what the blue line is on this this is a uh, like an eight-day moving average right here this down here is implied volatility for the blue line. I like the eight-day moving average. Um, eight-day moving average is a uh, moving average of the the market momentum. So uh, usually the thought process is here: if it goes below and settles below the moving average, it's it's bearish, and once it goes above it, it's bullish on an eight day. So we've just gone back above it. So it's, you know, it's been in pretty much bullish trend because it's for the most part staying above it. Uh, most frequent prices. Uh, sorry. Um, all right. So I'd push away from Costco just for that. Uh, the other thing is the other one I was looking at was Oracle. And Oracle uh, was looking pretty good because they have the December options, as you can see. So Oracle has already pulled up and it's had a nice push up. It is in a downtrend for the most part. So, you know, uh, it, it's pushed really, it had a great day today, uh, implied volatility. And see, I even have the implied volatility percentile put in here. Uh, you can find that under the the gear and add that as a column also just to make it easy. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, the blue area for volume profile, sorry. The question was, what is this blue area, I guess? This is the this is volume. This is how much volume and time has been spent here. And as you can see the, um, the little tiny numbers. Oops, oh, it's gonna do that for me. So if you go in here, these are the time increments, the little numbers in there. So it's time and volume. This is the volume here and the time there. So uh, anytime there's a lot of time and volume, that's where that, that particular market or underlying finds comfort, if you will. This is on toss, yes. So, uh, you know, if you go to the gears, you can go, or wait, that's not the right one. Uh, they've changed all this around. So monkey bars and volume profile is what you want to add. There's also another way to do it, which I, I look at for uh, if I'm looking to do something intraday, um, that would be set up this way. So you can tell it has a tendency to push up and down on the value areas. And then wherever the most is, is the point of control. All right, so moving on, Oracle looks pretty good. Um, and usually I only look, 
at the volume profile so it gives me an expanded view so I can see where the earnings are coming up rather than having to look it up somewhere. It just makes it a little easier. So Oracle just had earnings, so we don't have to worry about that so much. And I think their dividend's coming up pretty close, but we're would be, be after the X dividend date. So if you're entering this trade after the X dividend date, your long calls have already been adjusted for that. Um, for that, uh, the monkey bars are are the um, part of the vo volume profile. Add that to your volume profile if you are setting up a chart that way. And uh, so Oracle looks pretty good. Let's look at see what the next thing I would do is to check the Oracle bid ask. And, you know, you can see Oracle has a very nice tight bid ask. And you could even go sometimes the weeklies get a little bit wider. Um, and it's probably even going to be wider now because we're after the close. So uh, it could even be a little bit wider, but that's still pretty tight. So this would be one that I would look at. Uh, seriously so I might even look at doing the November weeklies for this and then skip this November option and go straight to the December and you want to pick the same strike so make sure that your strikes are still going to be able to fall in line so this is right there at the 31 so this is the one that we would want to sell so you could either go up here and set it up as your calendar and you can do it this way uh i don't always do it this way because watch if i do that it's just going to give me the next month i usually like to do my calendars you know one or two months away so i can roll them out or implement the uh the weeklies into that strategy which there's nothing wrong with doing that so i'm going to go back to the singles because i like to go go at it like this. I'm going to try and pick right in that 30 some odd day window where I can go this 35 days. Remember on that chart we showed you for the um, the uh, theta decay. That's what we're talking about um, right here. This theta decay really happens at 35 days. So I'm going to uh, try and use as close to that as I can and pick you know this strike right here because that's right where I was talking about if you're a lot more bearish on this then you can come closer to it uh, closer to at the money if you're not as wildly bullish you think it might even sell off uh, you know after that big rally that Oracle had so uh, that's that's a likely assumption and depending on your time frame too, you know, if you're using a shorter uh, time to expiration, you might even be a little bit more bearish in the near term and go a little bit closer. So, but you're picking the same strikes throughout this. So I'm going to try and look, you wouldn't want to really pick the 37 and a half because they're not going to have the half strikes down here further out. So the 38 strike looks to me pretty good. Um, especially on the uh, chart right here you can see it's kind of anything above this area is pretty pretty heavy it looks like to bounce up against so uh, the 38 strike I would be definitely comfortable with that if we have time I'll try and answer some of your questions on the monkey bars and the uh, market profile at the end there so 38 strike would be something I would look at doing. So go to the trade and then since I have it set up, I like the 38 strike. You're going to go in and sell this. So you just click on the sell side uh, and it automatically does 10 for me on that. And then hold down the control key uh, on your keyboard and then click the buy. And it should make it work okay so it's a 64 cent debit so the nice thing about this is uh, you know and then you would change your quantity to whatever you wanted it to and then you can confirm it and as you can see your buying power effect is almost nothing because it is a defined risk strategy uh, it there's no real risk on that 
one side other than the debt you the debt you pay of sixty four dollars so that is key and the nice thing is so we collected or we paid sixty four cents so you know after say you know 15 20 days if we really see this come out quickly and we see this go from 45 cents to say 20 cents I'm going to probably look to roll that immediately, 50% of this, whatever I collected for this. So if I sold it for 40 cents, let's say, as soon as it gets to 20 cents, I'm going to be looking to roll that. So I would look to roll that probably out to then the November and go at the 48 strike again. And um, so what did I say? 20 days. So we can go back to this theoretical. And I believe... I can change the date on it and get my theoretical going to say the 30th. So uh, let's go one more. So let's say Friday. So it'll tell you what the what it'll be worth then. So we would be able to go to 38 and collect another 18 cents. I don't know if I would do that necessarily. So what did I come up with? 10, 20 days away. So what's 20 days? So let's just pick the 30th. That seems like a better date. So that when we sold for 20 cents, it's, you know, or for 45 cents is worth seven cents. And then we would be able to uh, get that for 30 cents because we had to buy back. We sold it for 40, bought it back for seven. We collected 33 cents. And then we could collect another uh, 28 cents on these. So, you know, you're already at 61 cents. So you're almost for free on that. So that's how you would roll that out and then let that expire uh, or roll it into the December weeklies when they come in and keep rolling it out to this. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's what you would, that would be the game plan, let's say, especially if it's not rallying up. So you could eventually put that call on for free and it, especially if it kept kind of going down on you and slowly trickling down or just trading sideways, then you could keep collecting premium for that and get it for free and hope that it rallies up. Yes, you guys will be getting an email on this uh, shortly after this webinar is over. Okay, so the one, I like that one. So that's one that I would put in if we were open. But the other one that I really like, I, I've really been itching to get into some commodities. And now that it looks like uh, the Fed isn't going to do anything and there might be something on the table for QE. And I keep wanting to type in QE on my thing here. The GLD, silver, the... Uh, you know, as gold rallied today off of that, probably, you know, it's been really getting beat up. It's, you know, at the uh, historical lows for the most part here. I think that selling a call calendar now on this one, I'm pretty bullish on it. So I would want to try and get a little further away if possible. And um, uh, I think it will probably see a bit of a rally and maybe a come back off. And then, you know, the gold bugs are going to be coming after it, especially if Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering why that price wasn't right. Thank you, GLD. Um, thank you. Uh, so the yeah, it's had the. I knew it had a rally. I thought the chart looked funny, uh, but we've got a pop here. But I could easily see this come trading down and then give another uh, pop higher coming up, which is what I was looking at today. I was thinking, you know, it, it is in a bearish trend, no doubt. But uh, it has been making higher lows also. So that means what I, I look at this as, it's like a big rubber band and it's getting wound up and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and it's got to snap one way or the other. Uh, I think that the snap is going to be to the upside on this. And if we look at the options grid, we'll see that GLD has a pretty low Applied volatility rank. Now I've got all of the options open. 
Uh, so you come down here 29, it even came off more today. Uh, and in rallying markets, you guys, implied volatility usually comes out. Uh, there's rare occasions where a big rally, implied volatility gets pumped in like in here. GLD does have a tendency to do that, but you usually see implied volatility spike on down moves. So in this rally, as you can see here, implied volatility fell off. So um, in this rally, we could see implied volatility come off a little bit, but uh, I think that the rally, uh, implied volatility coming off in the front and the theta decay is gonna help us in the front. And then I think we're gonna see a bit of a move higher in most commodities they're just they've just been beaten up across the board i mean you can go into the grains and see that they've been beaten up uh, so uh, this is something i've been looking to add to my portfolio of course uh you know it's had a bit of a pop today but i think that's pretty good for that so i would go into the trade and the great thing about this is it has so many different option cycles. It really gives you the opportunity to uh, roll that out. So again, I'd probably look at the December options, maybe not even do the November, but go to this and play this strategy where this is one I'm gonna roll out because I don't know that it's gonna move real quickly, but I do think that it is going to move higher, uh, you know, going into uh, next year. So, you know, going into the end of the year to next year. So this is something that I think that is a good one to look to buy at around. Uh, look at the chart again. 112, I think, is where I was looking. If it gets above uh, 111 is really where I'd like to get into that because I think that if we break this high, it's going to at least push up to the 112 area, which would probably pay for the debt if it goes from 111 to 112 that we're going to end up having to pay for this. So if we're going to buy this one, we'd buy that one. And I'm probably going to sell this November contract because it's right in that theta decay. I want to really see some theta come out of it. And uh, we're doing the 111. So I'd look to sell this 111 here. So hold down control and hit sell. And we're going to pay $1.27 for it. So I would be looking to get out of this at around, uh, you know, $2.50 on a uh, doubling my money for that. All right, so that would be the trade I would like for that. And then again, you know, uh, after so many days when it goes down, if we stayed out of the money, it's going to collect an, a dollar. So uh, we'd collect a dollar for that side of it and then um, come into probably the November cycle. And then I would be selling these 111s for about 84 cents. So I'd collect another 84 cents to knock this down. Um, so, okay, so being asked, I understood that we have to go as far out as possible for the long leg. Uh, you don't have, that ends up becoming more along the lines of what I call a poor man's covered call, which we've done a uh, webinar on it. And when I go that far out, when you go out as far as you can, um, oh, why did it, I did it different. Okay, so if you go out as far as you can, there's, you know, a lot less theta decay and, you know, you go out over a year and we did one of these in Disney and uh, bought a very long dated one. But then I'm gonna be buying something that's really uh, in the money because then there's a lot less uh, extrinsic value in those deep in the monies than the intrinsic value. So you're basically buying the option for intrinsic value and you're, it's a synthetic long stock position. And then you cover it and roll it out the same way. But that, that's more along the lines of a poor man's covered call, which if you like those, we, we did a really good one on that uh, a while back on poor man's covered call. And despite the fact that I bought Disney uh, probably $20 higher, so I'm, I actually I'm losing about $10 in my 
option on that poor man's covered call and I made back five dollars by rolling the calls so um, you know eventually I hope to get that on for free and I think Disney is a good company and has just gotten beat up for whatever reason so uh, and that's something I wouldn't I like having in my core portfolio so that's why I had that so this is a little bit different this is a strategy where uh, you're not really trying to synthetically own the stock you're just trying to take advantage of this is a play on that's uh, a bit of a play on uh, on theta decay and volatility expansion but uh, it's so far out the volatility um, is going to affect it interim but uh, you don't really see it because you're just holding on to it forever. Uh, this, you're really trying to take advantage of some volatility expansion in the theta decay in the front. So uh, that's what this play is all about, and that's what we're trying to go after. So we got a couple of minutes here. One thing I always like to do is ask you guys what stocks you're looking at, and we can look at this and see if it would fit the parameters and everything else. You guys uh, want to throw out a couple ideas in there? The Q's, first one up, the Q's is uh, right here. And the Q's does have uh, a low implied volatility. Um, let me get rid of this. So the Q's obviously is one of the more popular ones, and it's usually even tighter than this. I mean, five cents wide for the Q's is pretty wide. Uh, but the Q's is good. I like it because, again, it's going to have several different options, uh, expiration months tied to it. There's always players in there. Um, so the Q's would be a pretty decent one. Uh, the only thing that I would, you know, like I said with the equities, the equities rallying, I think that we're going to see a lot of volatility contraction more than expansion in this. And we really want to see some volatility expansion. So it, as that is low, I think that this could compress a little bit further because, uh, like I said, in the Qs, as you can see, this is a, the example I was talking about. See how this volatility spike, that in that mathematical thing here where it's 33%, it's because it's coming off of this super high, you know, from that August spike. So this is one that I would say, let's go down and, you know, look at where it's been historically and kind of discount that a little bit. And as you can see, if you do the math, that's why it's important to know that math problem where you take the where it is now, subtract it by the low on the numerator, and then in the denominator, take the high, which, you know, you could say, let's discount that big spike in that that panic and that would probably put that a lot higher than where it's showing now does that make sense for you guys Andrea John is it uh, John asks, is it going higher well I don't know I've been bearish for a very long time and after today I'm a little bit more bullish on it just because that number was so bad that they aren't going to raise rates and the market is for, at least for the near term uh, going to have a bit of euphoria thinking hey quantitative easing we qe we so uh or qe um so uh, you know i tweeted that out earlier today markets yelling qe because they're excited about the possibility of more quantitative easing uh Andreas, uh, you're saying no, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. What about what I said doesn't make sense? So that's why, I, uh, you know, people are pumping out QQQ, DIA, uh, stuff like that. The, those I would be really weary about and do the math problem that we've talked about. Discount that huge spike in there and see if that's probably coming in a little bit higher than 50%. So the DIAs we got right here, you can see is... 32%, but again, this is another one. You know, look how there's been just no historical volatility in a rally. So, you know, you could almost say there to the low, that's right around 50%. So it's a little bit misleading there. I also got Netflix. 
Let's look at Netflix. I'm going to have to pull up the market profile monkey bars. Um, just because I think that they have earnings coming up pretty soon. Oops. Where am I at? Monkey bars. So see, your, our option cycles are going to land on this. It'd be something I would look at afterwards. Plus going in, I mean, one thing that is nice about this, going into that options trade, you're going to get, you're going to get the volatility expansion going into that binary event. But, um, you know, is it going to be much more than where it is now? I don't know. It's, it's stayed pretty high for quite a while. So, um, you know, if you got a, before it started really creeping up there and knew that was coming in, you could probably take advantage of that a little bit better. Does that make sense? Uh, about volatility, the discounting that sometimes on the indices, you need to discount like a major outlier where they just get a little wanky. Uh, like in diamonds. So, you know, sometimes you need a discount when there's this massive move and it just snaps back and now we're back into a range. Well, you could see it being in a range and just kind of trickling higher and that volatility is just going to get sucked out of it. We don't want to see volatility coming out of this strategy because when volatility comes out of the strategy, it affects the further duration months more than it affects the front month. Just like when it's expanding, it affects the further duration months more than it affects the near term duration months and we want that expansion in volatility we do not want to see volatility contract in this strategy um so that's that's what we've got going on with that uh and netflix so netflix is pretty tight you got to have some uh, deep pockets for netflix though because it's probably going to be um pretty expensive so Netflix, if we were looking at the 35 day, which I like to be at, um, we'll do the, that in just a second. The uh, monkey bars and stuff, I'll pull that up. Um, so if you sold, say the, uh, where's the gamma on this? 35s, you know, you're gonna sell, collect $5. So you'd sell that. And then I'd probably skip November because I'd like to, go a little further out and then uh, do the 120s by those so yeah you're only it's only costing you a dollar so that's pretty good that's a pretty good one oops yeah it's collecting dollar 68 for that I like that one a lot that would cost us a little more that would definitely be something good call on that. I'm going to have to look at that. What is Netflix's, uh, what is Netflix's volatility? I know I've got it up over here somewhere. See, it's a 82%. So in a rally, Netflix rallies, you're going to get crushed on the volatility contraction on this though. So, uh, and and the volatility is going to uh, get sucked out of that back month faster than it is the front month. So I don't know if it's going to the theta. I doubt the theta decay will keep up with the contraction and volatility for that. All right. So um, I'm going to uh, wrap this up for. But those guys who want to stick around, I'll go over the. Uh, I'll do a quick over the uh, monkey bars and stuff like that at the end there. Um, yeah, we're doing an, int uh, yeah, the option or the offer to buy your basic options course for $36 seems cheap. It is cheap, but we're trying to uh, uh, get the early guys in. We just started this. I've just been doing this with uh, pro trader strategies for a short time. So we're trying to get, some members in, but it is going to go up rather quickly. So um, if you want to get that, get in soon uh, because it's not going to last for very much longer. I'm sure uh, you will get um, Manuel, you will get a recording of this at the end here uh, at the, 
uh, after I, I'm going to have to compress it and do all that stuff, but it should take only about an hour or so. All right. So everybody, this is recorded. Please watch it right away. Uh, so it all sinks in. And this is the, the stretch, some of the, uh, deals that we were talking about this, you can get the commentaries, the, uh, options trading video and the trading workshops and for $97, which is a huge deal. We're just, like I said, we're trying to get some members in there and uh, get it going. The daily market commentaries, I talk about different strategies I'm looking at, you guys, and what I see in the market, talk about the different uh, economic data and things that are going on and, and what I think it's going to do to the market. We also have the trading videos, which are shorter synopsis kind of videos of these longer trading workshops. So if you want to watch something for 15 minutes rather than the full hour, uh, then you know you can look at that. It goes all the way back to um, Letus from uh, uh, Thales. So uh, he's the first person that started an options contract in uh, Italy with olive presses, which is a pretty interesting story. And then the online trading workshops, which is this, where we are doing an hour long, answering your questions, going back and forth. I'm also great about answering emails. If you have a real question about what you guys are doing and what uh, what's happening to your portfolios, if you want to ask me questions, I'm good about answering those or any questions about the videos, we'll do that. So um, uh, please check that out. Uh, anyway, so that's it for this. I'll go over the monkey bars. So if you guys want to stick around, I'll go over that real quick um, and uh, try and bang that out real quick and answer a couple of your questions. So the monkey bars here. So, you know, actually, you know, before I do this, I do want to thank you guys all that participated before you all leave uh, that don't want to watch this. And, um, you know, I appreciate you guys spending your afternoon with me. Uh, in the future webinars, we're going to be drilling down on other option strategies. Some of the other ones like, you know, the put call spreads are going to be really important if you think the market's going to rally back up. Um, and you can follow the link that's right there in the uh, chat box. There should be a link in there that you guys can click on to get the courses. And I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you want to contact us at 310-598-6677 or email me at trading at protraderstrategies.com. I do appreciate your guys' time and uh, and everything else. So uh, the feedback going back and forth is really great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, you're on an iPhone, no link. You can just go to Pro Trader Strategies and, and click on it. So uh, and there's a there's a section there that you can click on, or you can call us at that number I just uh, called out. All right, thank you guys. If you wanna stick around, I'll, I'll run over the monkey bars real quick. All right, back to the monkey bars. So the monkey bars, the way to do this is you go into the edit studies, and over here, you can do the monkey bars um, on the chart and the volume profile. And what that does is, and I don't think I changed anything around with it. And it's been so long since I've done this that I did change something with this, uh, I went, where'd it go? With this one. And it's a little bit different because I changed the time frames on it and stuff to give me the, uh, and I don't remember how I set it up to be quite honest. So this is the one I'll have to, if you want to email me, I'll figure out how I did this, but I don't want to waste everybody's time on it. I had to go through and, and play around with the settings to get it so that it breaks it down per day. And then I set it up with the, um, the studies on, on a, the style and intraday, 20 day, 15 minute chart. So that's how I did that one. I think is came down here and clicked on intraday, 20 day, because then it compiles the information for 20 days, puts it on a 15 minute chart to give the, the ones there. Let's see if I did that with the other one. I think that's how I did it because this one has style, it's just intraday, I don't have it set up that way. So I just have it on the daily with the 15 minute to give me this composite. I believe that's how I set them up so they'd be differently. Does that make sense, guys? 
those of you that wanted to look at this. Uh, Michael, you're asking, uh, will these spreads be out there? I don't know what you mean by that. I mean, I may put them on on Monday. I don't know. So that's how you would do it. You go up in here, you pull up any chart that you have, you know, and uh, let's say I wanted to put it on this one. Why is this one overtaking everything else? So then you go up to studies, go up here, just type in monkey. So we want monkey bars and uh, oops, add selected, pops in there, okay. And then that's the monkey bars right there, which is the time. It's the time going in there. And because uh, all those different dot, or all these are different days and different time frames that they traded at. And then it piles it up. On the floor, we used to call this Stottlemyre. He's actually the guy who came up with this charting system. But. Uh, but I'm sure he didn't like everybody using his stuff without paying him royalties. So they came up with volume profile. Volume profile. So I add that and you'll see apply. And it adds the volume in on top of it. So it's the time or the little numbers and then the profile or the, the volume is there. So you can see a lot of times the uh, point of control is where the most time, which is these, and the most volume is. And that's a lot of people trade that for intraday. You also, you don't really want to trade it when it's right around the value where, or the, the, sorry, point of control. Uh, you would rather put something on when it's bouncing up, like I'm contrarian. So, you know, when it pops up against it one of the first times, that's when I'm looking to sell it. When it bounces off the bottoms, that's when I'm looking to buy it uh, in a sense or get long it and get short it. So, the, uh, so I think if I go like this and go to intraday and set it up on like 20 day, 15 minutes, then I don't know why. That, I don't remember how I got that to do the breakdown on the other one. I'm going to have to figure that out. I might have gone into the uh, settings here and I'll have to, if, if you really want to find that out, you're going to have to uh, email me and I'll send you something. So I can't remember how to do it right offhand. Having a brain cramp, I guess, after a long Friday. So that's how you trade that. So like in UPS, this just popped up. So we are, we got UPS on here. This would be somewhere where I would be looking at UPS as a, uh, Oh, that's intraday. So I, I don't usually trade from the daily or for the intraday for 15 minutes unless it's up against this, you know, and then I'll, I'll zoom in on it and try and pick a time to really implement that or if I think it's going to turn around on me. But uh, that's usually when you want to put on those because those are the extremes. And it's kind of like the shorts are getting tired and the longs are going to start defending. And once it gets back here, then it'll start settling down. That's when you see the volatility contract. And uh, and then, you know, that's when you see your premiums collapse. So, like, if you sold the call spread and it comes back in here, it's going to sit here for a second or for a little short time, as you can tell. After the extremes, it's done that here. Uh, and then it got pushed back up right to the value area. So if you sell the calls up here, then watch the premium uh, decay out it's going to want to migrate to that. They're kind of like magnets, if you will. So it's just where the most people out there find, find value. And that's the way I look at charts is when people are, you know, I look at the candlesticks because it tells you where the bulls or bears are winning. It's all about psychology of the overall market. So it kind of gets me out of my own world too. So, uh, get into the definition of, your way to identify possible future movements. I usually look at price extremes uh, for my entry. So like that GLD, the reason why I like that is because, you know, it's been beaten up. It's at a price extreme. Something like this is right in the middle. If 
but I uh, look at price extremes. That's why I kind of, you know, I, I went through a lot of stocks before I went on this webinar, so I narrowed it down to a few. BBBY had good earnings. It's at a price extreme. It's way out of the value area. I could, and if the overall market starts rallying, BBBY is going to be pulled up with it, Bed Bath and Beyond. And um, so I like to look at price extremes, and I'm a contrarian. You know, some people say it's like picking, trying to catch a falling knife. Well, in a sense, but when you're the counterparty and you're catching falling knives or, you know, on the rally, then you also get paid for that because panic pumps up the premiums in those options. Well, on the downside, it pumps up the premiums in the puts. So those are the times where I'd want to sell puts for the most part. Um, and, you know, on the big rallies, sharp rallies, then they pump up the calls because when the market's free falling like this, most retail options traders do the wrong thing in my eyes, and that's they buy uh, options and fight everything. But, um, you know, you can make big wins with that too. So, but you get caught when you buy a put finally in here. And I also think that most retail traders have a tendency to enter at the wrong time. So, uh, but this would be a price extreme. You're also seeing a lot of support here. So I would think that that would be an extreme. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question there? All right. I hope I answered all you guys questions. We went quite long. I'm, Thank you guys all for sticking around a little bit longer um, and, you know, check out the link in the uh, chat box there. Join us next time when we do these webinars. And, you know, I love to hear your feedback, too. And, you know, if you got a strategy you want us to dig into, then, uh, you know, throw it out there to me and uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it and see if we can't do a webinar on it sometime. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining. And check out the link in the chat box. And if you can't take that, take it easy. Hey, you too. Have a great weekend. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you. Appreciate all the praise on there, you guys. Thank you very much. It's humbling. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Michael. Glad you enjoyed it, Manuel.